Hey there folks, it's been some time since the last video. I've had a pretty busy summer and uh, took a break from making these market internal review videos. They've been, I think, uh, beneficial from what, I'm, what I've heard from a handful of folks. And um, I, I think they got a little repetitive, as I mentioned in my, in my last video back in the, the end of May. I think we were just getting ready to start June. So we've had a pretty wild summer, uh, all, all time new highs across the entire market. Um, and you know, lots of rate cut speculation that hasn't really panned out to much of anything, uh, all the way to this last week, we just had Jackson hole and nothing too much to write home about there. The jobs numbers apparently have been unsurprisingly uh, overstated so that has shocked the market I think a little bit yet to be seen if there will be any more impacts from that uh, if you've been following my indicator publishing you probably noticed maybe a little bit of an obsession with top stocks in the market so the highest liquidity started to have a little bit more focus on that apart from the the market internals with this indicator up top that I had reviewed <laughs> probably a year ago now at least and th this was kind of the start of it tracking the, the top holdings of the S&P and the Nasdaq and it's definitely turned into a little bit more of an obsession digging in more to well, what kind of impact do these stocks have with the ETF, the index uh, that I'm trading <laughs> nearly every day? And it's it's been quite fascinating. So I have a I have another indicator that I've released, and I'll, I'll show it on this video. Um, and I also have another, uh, maybe more simplistic indicator from MIT, uh, just specifically focusing on tick. Uh, you also see that as well. So another change for me here recently, um, I guess I'll back up and say, first off, I hope everyone has been having a great year, a great trading year. Um, and, and for me, one of the things I've done is, is started to trade uh, triple Q a lot more. NASDAQ, I paid a lot more attention to that, and that has something to do with uh, the top stocks. So pulling this back up, Looking at the top stocks, most of these are tech companies. So a lot of NASDAQ names you can see in the, the uh, prefix here for all the symbols. Obviously on NASDAQ, the top holdings are all NASDAQ, but a huge amount of overlap and these do change. This might not even be up to date with the, <laughs> with the orders in the top, but this looks fairly, this looks fairly accurate still. So yeah, so I've been doing a lot more of uh, triple Q I do still watch SPY every day, and sometimes I decide to trade that. Uh, I'm also mixed up in a lot of SPX type uh, zero day strategies. So it's not that I'm not watching this every day. It's just uh, been a lot more active in the, the top liquidity uh, tech companies. So let me go over to the old monthly TWAP. I've kind of simplified the, the chart here. Used to have the TWAP ranges indicator on here, which I still do. I, I've just hidden it because I think it's pretty clear to see <laughs> where we're at just from this bird's eye view. So I, I'm I'm gonna skip through June, July, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump right into to August here and just kind of share with you some of my thoughts. So we had the big drop, um, worked back quite a lot of the summer progress. So we had we definitely retested a, a ton of that range and one thing that I was uh, kind of watching um, I'll be honest I, I kind of stopped watching the monthly TWAPs as much I was really maybe too hyper focused on the intraday <laughs> and weekly type uh, time frames but started to look back into this and, and this really helped guide me uh, as I used to show in the the older videos is you know, if we're under monthly TWAP and starting to break down, be cautious of being long on the, the major liquidity in the, the SPY and the S&P and the, and the NASDAQ markets. Maybe look for deals elsewhere, but 
specifically these two markets are the ones I'm reviewing most often. And so looking at this, uh, we had, gosh, pretty much a, a consistent sell because it was around 20 days. So 20 days, $54 on SPY. So pretty dang fast. It was like, it took us much longer to get up here, like at least triple the time. And then we, we dropped it all. <laughs> So it was pretty wild, and I, I immediately thought, hey, I'm going to go look at monthly TWAP. So here we are, and it wasn't really until – so we had a couple tests here uh, of monthly TWAP early August, that first week, and we kind of juggled around there and revisited the low of the that first deviation zone. And you can even see the zones kind of squeezing up here, and then we finally – just here a uh, couple couple weeks back we bounced over and started to hold it so we got this consolidation back from these highs here right before this absolutely insane overnight drop because uh, of the futures market and that uh, was kind of held for a couple of <laughs> grueling days of chop and we finally broke through that mid-august and have been having a, a, a buying party ever since we crested the second deviation into the third, this third zone here, and kind of again started to chop as we ease our way back up into that 565 uh, all time high area. And honestly, it was kind of interesting to see that pretty much all the indices were doing the same, same thing. So, same dates, same kind of price action. They were all very much in sync. Even you know, usually in the old uh, older videos, I would show you these drops that we would have. And sometimes the Russ was a little stronger or Dow or Dow and Russ. Or sometimes it was just tech and really did not see that. Instead, we just kind of saw them all in unison operating together. So it was the entire market feeling it. And same kind of thing. We look at the Dow we're near all-time highs, and we're just kind of easing right back up. But you can see the monthly TWAP retest, chop through for a better half of a week, and then finally start to see that buy uh, come through. And Russ, Russ was no exception. I don't have – that might actually be the all-time high. They struggled with 200 for so flipping long and finally just, uh, just started to have a little party before that, that drop that we had. So um, this one here is not, I would say, not as strong. I mean, I know it's in the third zone, but it's just kind of right in the edge. It, it never really broke strongly in here and, and traded in here for, for a handful of days. And you can see it's actually been hugging inside this first deviation for a lot longer uh, than the other ones did. So in that way, maybe it is stronger, but um, I'm just not. It's a little further away from its target. Though I do have to remember Russell's, uh, well, it's huge, but it's small from a price standpoint in range. Uh, average ranges are nothing compared to <laughs> Q's and, and SPY and whatnot. So um, heading back into last week. So last week, I, like I said, I've been watching the top holdings, and they they undoubtedly are, as far as I'm concerned, being used or most affected and pushing everything else around. So I've been watching, and uh, it's pretty clear price action. You know, when when they're not in majority advancement, we don't see a lot of adherence to all the things that I've demonstrated on this channel. And when we start to see them break up, that's when we start to see the index break up. And it's just really been a whole lot of that. So my old filtering rules, I still use those every day. If we're above previous TWAP zone, then I'm long focused. If we are over TWAP current session, I am long focused. If we're under current TWAP under, uh, and over previous, if we're in between those two, then that's CHOP. Very rarely would I look for any kind of opportunities. And then obviously prior session range and all those things that make my charts look absolutely crazy are all the things that I'm still using and still adhering to. But uh, definitely a big focus on on this setup up here. And I would even say I've, I've become a lot more... Um, I set this to 500. I become a lot more of a user of the ratios. So I added those to MIT a while back, which I don't know appeared to anger some people, but uh, I really do like these ratios. And so I actually on add 
I've even become a little bit more accustomed to just looking at those as well. So obviously I still look at the trend bands. I, I like the arrows or well dots in my case. And I like to look at those for if I want to do just more of a scalp type entry, like here for shorts, I may try to oppose the trend and grab like the shorts on the extreme tick on an uptrend, especially right here, like at this uh, TWAP rejection prior mid of range and, and just go for it, you know, but I like to look at this uh, ratio, you know, anything, anything under two to one, that's, that's basically like a BS chop day, you know, maybe deploy some non-directional type strategies. Same thing for the, the volume. If I see the less than two to one volume, then, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of buying or selling going on. It's, or, or at least directionally, uh, there's no strength from my observations. So yeah, a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff. And, and this whole last week is really looking to see how we open up. In this case, we had a Jackson Hole event, so it's going to be kind of shaky anyways. Looking at the gap up here at, at open, what are the top stocks doing? Are they predominantly opening at a, on a high end? And are we holding TWAP even though some mornings this is flat because there's no tick? In this case, we had an insane amount of tick. I think this is like a $4 gap up on the queues. Like I said, I'm, I'm watching that more than uh, more than SPY these days. But anyways, same same applies no matter what you're trading. And looking at this, is a, it's a good time to wait and see if there's a good buy that's going to be happening. Even though we're above the filter range and all the other data, right? You, you, typically you don't want to buy this kind of tick this is insane and especially on a gap up open where the top liquidity in the market's pumped right it's a good good way to get caught with your <laughs> with your lungs getting decimated jackson hole is a little bit of a different event a fed event those are those are hard to predict anything using any kind of data uh best to usually just sit out and not trade those days so but yeah these rules uh, if you follow them they are still quite effective and i have seen amazing adherence to twap ranges and twap itself so much so i'm gonna flip over here uh, i'm gonna hide this one for a moment but so much so that again given my <laughs> obsession recently with top holdings i've created and i released an entire new indicator on twap itself so I created this uh, percent B, TWAP percent B indicator uh, a while back. And all that really does is show you the closing prices of a, whatever it is you have loaded on your chart down here as a lower study relative to the TWAP band. So instead of the TWAP bands moving like they do on the upper chart, the, the price moves down here and, and the bands stay flat. So it's the same data. Uh, well, not... Not this one, but the the regular TWAP percent B. Um, Bollinger Band has a has a percent B. Uh, that's kind of where the idea came from, and so I wanted to know if TradingView's platform would even allow it. Could I track the top holdings and calculate their TWAP percent Bs, and what would the data show me? What does the average look like? All that kind of stuff. So I did a, a study on that, and it's it's pretty fascinating. I would say that um, on some days it's pretty close to TWAP just directly on the queues. Other days you'll see something different. Jackson Hole, I think the market was mostly in sync. So this was a yeah. I, I think this is a good day here. So seeing seeing how quickly all the top stocks TWAP starting to fall below. And we get this retest right around the same time TWAP on Qs is getting the retest. It's just an extra level of confirmation for me on whatever kind of trades I'm going to take. In this case, you know, we're hitting second deviation low, all the top stocks, and we're kind of getting the same thing on here. So, you know, you might be tempted to maybe do like a counter bounce type trade, even though it goes against some of the filtering rules. So you could use this to kind of take a look at that. Another thing that's fascinating, uh, I think, in here is um, let's say, let's say you don't care about the average, and and you know maybe you just want to look at a couple of different stocks. You know you can uncheck all the ones you don't care about, and then this way you would have um, you would have a couple different stocks that you could just watch at any time, no matter what you're looking at here on the main chart. Again, this is all very crazy in the morning because 
we got to let that take data load in. And I've been using 300 uh, sensitivity with NASDAQ. Yeah, I feel that that seems to work the best. Balance between smoothness and, and accuracy. And yeah, this is a good indicator. I think I'm going to continue to develop more breadth indicators using top stocks. I mean, of course, you could you could adjust this to whatever you want. I did put all the weightings in here of uh, triple Q. So that ETF, what are the weightings in here? And it actually does use that when it when it generates this uh, uh, average white plot here on the indicator. So that's that's definitely one that I would recommend checking out. And it definitely kind of can help. It, it's difficult for me to go and recall exact moments where I have seen very highly contrasting differences between the two. Actually, here's one. I just found one uh, here on this day. So we've got um, we got the Qs testing the uh, first standard deviation on the high end. But here, the average of all the, the top stocks is actually retesting TWAP itself uh, per the per the percent V measurement. So that's a divergence of sorts. So you would see a higher higher low here and same low here. And I don't know. Maybe I didn't uh, update this. I have a I have a development version of this where it actually will show you the uh, it'll plot out the deviations. So I guess stay tuned for that. And we kind of have another one here where Q's made a lower low, but uh, and the percent B made an equal low. So that's another divergence. So there's tons of these. Definitely recommend checking it out. Could be useful for you. Maybe not. <laughs> Obviously, nothing's guaranteed. But uh, another indicator that I have made and I just published recently is uh, focused on not what well, could replace MIT for some folks, uh, but it's it's focused on a little bit less of that high noise environment of tick. So if we go back over here, you can see tick itself is is very noisy, right? These are just the bars mostly as a histogram, and they're very noisy. One second they're up here, second they're down here, back and forth, right? Look, it's very noisy, but there's information in the noise if you are patient enough and and build that skill to read it but for those that maybe don't have that kind of time or you know for whatever reason can't focus on the nuance just can't get it then I wanted to kind of create something else that could provide that same context albeit slightly smooth so there's a little bit more latency in that and perhaps aiding a little bit of a different kind of trader somebody that's maybe swinging more intraday for multiple hours. I tend to do that at times and also could still facilitate somebody that's doing maybe like 15 minute trades or something of that kind. I don't think, I don't think this is going to tell you very discreetly, like up to the minute. Um, but I mean, you could experiment on different time frames, of course, but anyways, this one here is called um, Market Tick Trend. I've written so many, I'm starting to forget the names. Of course, you can pick uh, the, the New York Stock Exchange, the NICE, or NASDAQ itself for your market. And then you've got these different modes. So the modes, uh, somewhat sensitivity. Oh, gosh, it, it took me a while to decide on a name for this setting, but it's a smoothing factor as well. It's a couple different things rolled into one. So one would be the most sensitive and, and somewhat kind of the quickest. Two, obviously, if you follow along, we'll start to smooth it out and, and give you a little bit of a different picture. And it does, ironically, I didn't actually plan for this. The way I did the measurements underneath, it actually resets every day. But because of the gap ups and the nature of how it's been working is you actually get a complete day-to-day picture and you start moving out and you get a little bit more of a smoother day over day trend as well so five I would say is something that maybe I have not tested this uh, I haven't even tested this for that long but I was really excited to release it because it it does look very good and I'm I'm starting to hold them internally for testing a lot less as I re uh, develop different ideas and just let the people test them and decide what you want to do with them but five is is pretty darn cool uh for 
more of a longer, maybe like a week long type view. And I mean, you can see, you can zoom out and I mean, it's, it's really given a great picture of kind of what, what the price is doing. So versus uh, if you go back to one, for example, and you try to zoom out, you're, you, you'll be able to tell some things, but it's not, it's not as clear. I, I don't think so. One of my experiments that I'm doing with this, uh, as I have time and, and I'm willing to not use other strategies, is uh, do some do some kind of combined filtration and and trading. So looking at when both of these trends align, right? They both go solid green. Maybe that's a good opportunity. Combine it with filtering rules or whatever else you want to look at. Even traditional indicators, I'm sure, like RSI or MACD or whatever you like to use. This might just complement a very simple no indicator uh, overlay kind of trading. You know, there's a lot of people that will just use ICT, price action, whatever. Um, this could complement, you know, maybe you're looking at an order block or a fair value gap and you're not sure. Or maybe you want something to see if the whole market itself is over, quote unquote, uh, been pushing high to the upside. But you're about ready to take a, a mean reversion trade or or whatever short long you could use this to kind of maybe provide a little bit more uh, Intel but I know most ICT traders are not going to probably use this <laughs> um, but anyway so you know, looking at alignment across different uh, modes is is one area of interest that I have you can use a higher mode for looking at uh, more of a safer maybe <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think i want to use that word but some kind of longer bias and then you can look for the counter setup so like in this case we're mostly bullish according to this measurement we wouldn't know that all day but let's say like you see this first dip and then we kind of chop around so then you we wait for the next one right so this is still green still green cooling off we get another dip here all right maybe try to invert that right because of this one down here and then boom we get a we get a nice little up move uh, same thing you could add in here, or, you know, decide all kinds of different things. Same, same thing here, right? We're cooling off on this one and we're starting to heat back up on the upside on this one. That's a pretty good little scalp, especially if you're doing futures or something. So this one again is called market tick trend or MTT. So I don't know if that'll make a permanent display on the channel, uh, but definitely something to look at. So um, let's see here. Moving on. So again, we covered monthly TWAP ranges for August. We're about done with August and they're all pretty high up, pushing all time highs or getting real close to that. So definitely be cautious there. Uh, looking at some of the older layouts, um, less focused on market internals, but still breadth. Looking at spider. So looking at the RSI. Yes, I still use more basic indicators sometimes moving averages and rsis they still can give you information and looking at all the different sectors we see finance unfortunately for me uh in one of my trades is um still cooking pretty dang hot and we got a handful of other ones uh healthcare's uh, pretty dang high staples um some of the laggards we got energy by itself is still you know medium uh, real estate, surprisingly up there. Communication uh, services, which would be like Meta, uh, Google, obviously a ton of other non-tech companies. I personally don't even think Meta and Google should, Google should be in here, but they are. They're they're kind of lagging compared to the the rest, right? Um, consumer discretionary, same kind of thing. And I think that's seasonality wise that's kind of typical because we've got coming off summer and, and all that yeah so if looking at the the lowest study here which if you've not watched the videos before uh, i'll just briefly describe this one so this is market average trend and this one basically kind of what the name indicates we pick a market in this case s p 500 and we can look and see what's the breadth of the stocks in the 500 that is above the five day average. These are all simple moving averages. We got the 20, 50, 100, and the 200. Just looking at this, so the thickest line is the, the slowest moving average. So we would expect the 200 to, to lag way behind price if it's having an aggressive move. And likewise, until it starts to really tighten up, the smaller the average P500 
period becomes. So up to five, I just give it a, 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 a width of one. 20 is also a width of one, and then we got two, three, and, and four. So looking at all those, we've got the majority of the S&P 500, 74%, uh, or sorry, 76% is over the 200. 79 is over the 50. 81 is over the 5. So uh, nearly 82% actually. So this is a pretty hot market to get back up here. You could see we did test, uh, I believe this is either the 5 or the 20. We had only, gosh, this was like 5, 6%. Only 6% was over there. Their 5 and, and 20 moving averages. I'm not sure which one this actually is. Uh, I'm going to say probably the 5, given this drop. But, uh, yeah, looking at this, I mean, that was an aggressive drop. I know I felt it. We had similar back here, right? So these are definitely kind of the deals. And, obviously, you got to use your own your own gear to determine maybe when you buy the dip. So this one, uh, I grabbed some stuff and did okay. Uh, but this dip, you know, it spooked me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was very aggressive. Um, but, yeah, so that's our outlook right now, I would say, as it stands, we've got maybe some some uh, cyclical movement to expect up ahead. So just uh, kind of watch out for that and maybe check out uh, the market average trend indicator. It's a very it's a very powerful tool to determine kind of you know where things are at from a from an over uh, overall like upside. How much room do we have? Kind of deal. But you can see in times past. Uh, so we had this whole. We had this whole run here, and a lot of times it stays pretty flat. So when we get these peaks, where we start peaking up over here and over here and over here, and definitely like kind of up here, that's when we start to maybe get some of these drops here. So we're we've been peaking up a couple of times up here already, and we we came back a little bit, and we're peaking back up again. So it's interesting, right? We've got election year, so. That's going to be another thing. So one other uh, platform I have been using for a little while, and I've been trying to uh, <laughs> coerce them to add more market internals information and developing some indicators and things over here is uh, the TrendSpider platform. And, uh, you know, still kind of early stages for me on, on using it for market internals. I can't intraday data, for example, yet, but I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. Um, and I'll be probably creating um, maybe separate series of videos for this platform. There's some very powerful things you can do with this uh, as far as it comes to like building bots and strategies. And I'm excited to look at it more for um, longer term, like market internals type strategies. I've got one that I've built specifically for Vold using it as a kind of a buy the dip uh, for like a, a week long type trade. Like I said, I can't really get that information over here yet. So stay tuned. But one thing that is really interesting to use TrendsBiter for is the seasonality information. So I like to use it for uh, a little bit more of a recent. So 2008, we kind of had the uh, financial crisis, if you will. And uh, looking, I guess it was probably 2007, 2008. So we can include, we can, we can include that. So this one gives you some pretty good information on potentially what kind of behaviors to expect for, in this case, like any given month. So this is kind of small. So let me let me make this full screen. God, that's huge. So coming into September, it's a historically, you know, less less likely we'll start we'll see like a buying type positive change for that month so you can look here and this is showing you that 47 percent of all septembers for the last 18 years had a positive change percentage uh, from from prior month i'm assuming that's what that means so compared to say uh, july april may those spring months not as hot right so we got this june and if we flip, let's see, flip back over to June, what were we doing in June? So in this case, you know, and this isn't everything, right? Seasonality 
it's it's just historical data. But in this case, you know, June was was okay. Eh, yeah, you know, actually, I guess it was pretty spot on because we we barely moved. Now that I look at this, so here's. Oh, okay, no, never mind. Let me look at this. So here's June three, and let's see, that's uh, July first is right there. We had a decent amount, so we opened up around five twenty eight, five forty four. So what is that like a fifteen dollar move or something like that? Yeah, that's not too shab. No, that's that's something. <laughs> it's not. It ain't no. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> it's nothing like that, but it's pretty good. Yeah, so it's not everything. Seasonality is not everything for sure, but it's another piece of data. It's another clue, and perhaps what to what to expect. Maybe be a little bit more defensive, a little less aggressive, or you know, if we have a big dip in September, and we can see in November uh, seasonality showing a uh, high time. Yeah, that might be. This might be the time to buy, and that might be the time to sell. So. This kind of depends, but anyways, I'm you know, I'm looking at this uh, seasonality information right here in this platform. It's it's pretty cool. Another thing to look at with this is let's see here is uh, in usual options data. So we get this in in some other platforms, but it's it's pretty powerful right inside of of this platform. And I like to filter it down it, it, when I'm looking at uh, a little bit broader range. I'll, I'll just filter it into the year. And I like to jack the premium around a little bit, um, you know, like 150 plus. Uh, the 25K positions, I mean, granted, that's, that's still a chunk of change. I want to see kind of like what the bigger, you know, maybe not even a whale. I don't think 150k is really even a whale but if only the bigger players in the market what are they doing and it's really cool because you can look at the dates down here on this axis and the strike here and then you get this uh, dot plot which shows the 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 bigger the dot the more concentration in this case of strike trades and or premium we can look here somebody or collection of the market has a decent amount, two million in premium for five seventy calls, expiring at the end of August this year. And th obviously, this could be a hedge. <laughs> it could be part of a multi-leg uh, strategy. I'm assuming. So, it's not indicative necessarily of like something you should go do, but it's again, it's information. What I personally have done with these is put a plot on the chart at 570. So whatever that strike is, right? I'm assuming, like let's say this is a straight up, somebody spent 2 million in 570 calls. Well, if those go in the money, I would expect some profit taking. <laughs> you know, so uh, 570 could be important. Uh, same thing here, 561, we got 1.1 million on that strike. And yeah, I guess these are, maybe they're different positions. I should probably read the documentation again on this. I just like these dots. That's what I go for. Uh, 567. So that's roughly around the all-time high and a fair amount. That's over a million combined in premium. I mean, not another thing you can see, right, is it's not a lot of puts where this is puts and that's 500,000, still fair about a uh, fair amount. And you know, the last price is the is the divider here. So this dark blue area, this would be underwater potentially, and then these are not in the money yet. And uh, let's see, yeah, that was five fifty eight. So last price five sixty two. Yeah, so they're they're not potentially not having a great time unless they're hedging some of this stuff. <laughs> And I just noticed we have like the world's tiniest little dot down here. <laughs> oh my gosh, 534 strike calls expiring in December. So these are leap. Well, no, actually, I wouldn't call these leaps. They could have been when they were purchased. I don't know that this shows the date. But anyways, that's another useful tool. So 570, um, we're pretty close. So all-time high, 565, 570 is just a just a hop, skip, and a jump away from that. So it could be some interesting things to see there. And then down here, we do have a couple of breadth indicators. Uh, so this is a little bit like my market average trend indicator. This will show you the S&P 500 and the percentage of stocks over the 50 SMA. So we are at 
70, what did that say? Let's see. 71 percent so a difference in data providers so over here the data provider is showing a 79 percent for the 50 sma for the s p 500 so take it for what you will i guess looking at that this is one of the other breadth indicators they have so this one's actually interesting and i don't i don't know what the data feed would be over on the other platforms but this one here will show uh, new highs in the s p 500 uh, over the last 14 days so you have a couple different things you can pick you can do 21 day 63 day which is uh that's very specific and then same thing for lows net 52 week highs and lows so we can let's try that one Oh, interesting. Okay, so 52-week high and low, that was basically, that was actually, that went negative. So negative here, negative here, here, and negative here. Wow, those are all pretty good dip indications. Maybe save for that one. It's not really much of a dip. Huh. Okay, well, I'm going to be looking at that one more. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so that went way low. Push under the 50 at that point. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, anyways, so that, yeah, this platform, again, uh, this is TrendSpider, and still kind of getting into it and going to test out a lot more of this platform. Like I said, I've been developing some indicators for it, uh, but still TBD on, on a lot of the ones that I have built on other platforms until the data is made available over here. Uh, definitely working with folks uh, over at TrendSpider to try to get more data, need more data. So stay tuned on that. But one thing I do love on this one versus TradingView is um, the what's happening now thing. So this feed, you can add in uh, lots of different feeds. They have like, <laughs> they have like a Nancy Pelosi. Gosh, they got, they have so many things. I, I haven't even checked all of them, insider trades um unusual options yeah here's a pelosi track tracker uh, i almost said tractor uh you could tell i live in rural america yeah but yeah they, they have so many different feeds in here but anyways the one i like that as far as i'm concerned blows away uh trading views deal is the earnings because you can come in here and say i only want to see their <laughs> earnings within a certain amount of days and within a certain, you can make your own watch list. Uh, I just picked the S&P 100. Obviously, you can go and pick all kinds of other things. But anyways, I love this because if I come back over to uh, here and I go to earnings, I just, I'm forced to go through all of the, all of the garbage companies that I don't care about. I, they're not top liquidity. I just, you know, is is Tupperware brands going to move the market? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't care about it. But I can't filter it out. There's, well, gosh, yeah, there's, there's no options for it at all. And maybe they'll have them at some point. But I come over here, I pick a different, uh, I pick a watch list, and boom, it's filtered. So I only care about certain companies. This brings them right to the top and so of course uh, we've got nvidia on the 28th Ooh, that's this week and then we also have salesforce crm on the 28th so definitely nvidia is going to uh, move the market absolutely <laughs> how could it not it has been making the same kind of rise hell it could be <laughs> it could be why the whole market is going back up for all I know. I wouldn't disbelieve that uh, at all. And so seasonality, last 18 years. I'm not sure the financial crisis really matters uh, for NVIDIA, but let's look at the, let's look at the options data here for, let's see, for NVIDIA. Wow. <laughs> Calls. Okay. Two mil and preem. Looking, looking pretty spicy there. Let's see. Not a lot of puts. All right. Wow. What is strike? Okay, yeah, maybe 
maybe we don't care about some strikes here. Let's go, let's go up to like 80. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. There's a little tiny. Gosh, it's so tiny, but that's still that's still a chunk of change. 170, 170, almost 175 thou. That's pretty good. Yeah, two mil. Okay. At 231,000, I feel like <laughs> that's that's not even double of that, but it's like a billion times bigger. I feel like that could be a little bigger. 0.28%. What's this one? 0.89% of open interest. So that's another thing. When you look at these and you see that it's a very small percentage of the open interest, that's not as interesting to me. So I like to see the big bets that are way above open interest like these puts here 98 percent of the open interest that's that's very fascinating to me that's interesting and that is for 128 puts well, that's really close to current price and that's for september so this to me seems like an earnings an earnings trade this is very much set up for earnings they're smart whoever did this because it's enough time away from uh, expiration time away from the earnings so the the implied volatility on the chain is probably going to affect that expiration way less i know it will impact this way less than say next week <laughs> um, so that's interesting that's really interesting to see again though it could be a hedge on any of these other ones so this one here for example is two hundred forty-eight thousand in premium this is 267 234 so that's really close to these two guys you can kind of see that by the dot size so i you, you know it could be a complex multi-leg strategy on options it could be calendar uh well i guess you wouldn't use uh puts and calls for calendar but yeah it could be lots of different things is there anything i haven't covered yet <laughs> this is a long video uh, I haven't made one in a long time so just trying to cover a whole bunch of bases and more long form so I guess uh, I'm not going to apologize for it. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess for me, all signals um, are obviously still on the upside. Uh, I'm going to do a real, I'm going to do a poor man's TWAP range here, prior TWAP range. So first deviation, look at that. So we kind of ripped through it, and now we're, we're kind of testing it and staying above it. So I would say as long as SPY can stay over 5.58, um i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on upside i mean obviously i already was but definitely still uh with that range and let's see cues yeah you know cues are oh come on cues are still lacking look at that hitting that prior twap monthly twap and bing bong bing bong just going right through it back and forth no, no real decision yet. So actually, I'm not going to be bullish on tech, like real, real bullish. Obviously, you know, we got all this. That's bullish for sure. But in the grand scheme of things, the big picture, uh, we got 495-ish to contend with. I want to stay over 480 if I'm going to really consider swing longs up here. And then, of course, we got 503 to contend with. So those are definitely some things I'm going to be watching as we continue on but again we've got uh only a few more days for this range i mean i'll still look at it obviously but the next range is going to be this prior twap monthly twap range into september so we're going to get that new month and we're going to get uh yeah we're going to get the new month and we're going to get a whole new set of crazy uh with all the presidency uh you know news that's always coming out and all that stuff so that's gonna yeah that's gonna keep fomenting and fudding this whole market i have a feeling right up until christmas time so happy holidays i suppose <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna end it there i think crazy bold i don't have much else folks uh, i'm gonna try to Toss some more videos out on the regular. Some things have calmed down on the personal side. So hopefully I'll have some more time to make more of these on a somewhat uh, like once a week basis or so. So hope you took something away from this. And like I said earlier in the video, way earlier in the video, hope you've been having a great time in the markets and hope you're finding success. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and happy trading.